If you would rather listen to this episode as a podcast so you can download it or listen on the go, you can click the link in the description to check out our Spotify page where we upload all of our reviews and longer content as podcasts. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the last review of Bad Batch Season 1, uh, season one Episode 16, Camino Lost. Before we hop in, I know we said it in the reaction, but huge thank you for everyone who's joined during this season um and all our videos it's been the most growth we've had <laughs> yeah. insane about our highest viewed videos are from bad batch so we're loving it please stay around we have a rebels uh reaction channel i haven't seen it um evan has but he's we're both reacting so it's gonna be awesome we have a couple out so catch up before we start releasing new ones um and then yeah stay around now and hear what we have to say about the finale oh yes the bad Ooh. batch Season one is over, um, and you know I I feel like we all had a pretty good time, uh, but we're gonna be saving all of our thoughts on the season overall for a separate video coming out very soon. We'll have a season one review, probably be about the same length as these individual episode ones, um, but it'll just be about the entire season as a whole. Uh, after this, we're gonna rewatch the entire season front to back, you know, in a row like binging. Instead of yep. waiting a week each time to, you know, get it all fresh and see how it works when you binge it through. Um, and also after that, we'll be having an episode ranking where we rank all the episodes from least favorite to most favorite. Um, you know, not really about like in terms of objective quality, but just more how each episode makes us feel. Um, so, yeah, look out for that as well as the Rebel stuff, because we're not done Bad Batch just yet. And if you have any other ideas, any more content you want from Bad Batch, let us know. Because we're yeah. still hype about it. We loved it. So please, oh, let yeah. us know. Um, so starting off here, normally, if you've seen any of the other reviews, um, we, ha we have like sections, like different portions. Like we got Omega, and then we got uh, Crosshair. We got this part of the Empire, this, this. Um, it's going to be a little different for this one. I kind of have all of the episode stuff that we're going to talk about kind of in one section and then the second section of the video is going to be kind of just our review which will be longer yeah. than normal okay. like just on the entire episode all of our thoughts what we thought you know could have went different what we liked you know all that will be at the end but us discussing the plot and everything will be first um so i don't know if you saw this or not uh but starting out with with crosshair here um, the Bad Batch executive producer and head writer Jennifer Corbett, uh, in an interview on like StarWars.com or something, actually confirmed that Crosshair's chip has been removed. It is Ooh. official that the chip is removed. That's huge. Um, yeah, there was a question asking about how there was like people on Twitter like debating over whether it's it was removed or not, or you know the Empire tricked him into thinking it. Uh, and Jennifer says, quote, I think we can say that he had his chip removed. Um, and then she also went on to say, quote, the eagle-eyed fan will rewatch the season and notice a shift in his character, and when that is, they'll probably have seen it all along. That is something that Ooh. we have been talking about we did say in that. all of our reviews recently. Um, we've been discussing, you know, subtle changes in his character, uh, so now that we know that it was at some point in the season, I'm going to go ahead and say I 100% believe this is after the ion engine blows up in his face. Um, all that energy, all I saw there was like a comment on an Instagram post about all of that radiation and how it would like just mess up his chip in any way. So if there if there was a point where that was to be removed, I think it's right there. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you've heard that yet, but um, what do you think about it being out? Actually, Officially. I did not hear about that, so okay. cool to get that news live Until. during our... <laughs> but um, no, I think that makes sense. Um, I've been talking about it, both of us, uh, just his mood shift. He got so much more personable after, like you said, after that Ion Blast. Um, and that's exactly where I would pinpoint it, too. Both, like you said, because it probably got smoked. <laughs> it probably yeah. melted inside of him, so... Like, medically, they probably had to take it out, um, as well as, like, they probably were just taking it out anyway um, to allow Crosshair to be better at tracking them down, be more personal about it. Um, yeah, we both said, I think even in that episode, that review, that, oh, he's different now. Like, he, he's not so stoic, so calculating anymore. There's a little bit more Crosshair yeah, to him. He's not so, stiff. Yeah, so that's, that's actually really cool um, to where she says, oh, if you're, like eagle-eyed viewers you get it and 
to the point where now nah, I'm, I'm not saying we're eagle eyed i'm saying they did a good job to where we did catch it even without yeah. them straight just telling us so right. that's I, I, i'm really happy to hear that actually yeah. um i i agree with that for the most part that uh you know especially not like to like toot our own horns and say well oh we're just like these really great star wars and yeah i didn't mean um, that yeah <laughs> but this is something that we're like very not uh focused there's a word the word when you're like really deep into something i know it but i can't think of it right now um you know until like you're not not invested like, invest there it is thank you Ooh, gotcha, um, gotcha. we're very invested in this franchise we're running this channel Absolutely. and even if we weren't it's like a big thing to us um oh, yeah. but i feel like for a lot of more general audiences which is probably a majority of the viewer base um i feel like that should have been a little bit more obvious for for a general audience because crosshair has very few scenes in this entire season he does not have a lot of screen time and not everybody would be able to pick up on those minute little character shifts where you if someone who like is paying an insane amount an overly abundant amount of attention or has like a deep investment in this would notice like a little minute character moment where oh this time he acted like this instead of this i feel like not everybody would would be able to pick up on that not as in like they're not as smart or they're dumb but just like it wasn't as blatantly obvious as a lot of people could have thought it to be so i feel like they they could have done a better job in making the change obvious um going from the straight laced you know you know stickler kind of yes sir killing people just because it's calculated and it's the orders from the switch to the more of crosshair's personality coming out but still being that soldier i feel like there was not enough hints towards the change because even up until this point we were only guessing and like yeah. using that as possibilities of why of what is happening so it, i feel like it wasn't as obvious as it should have been as to when the it's like it the they make it out to be as if this is like a big moment like when you think when you look back and you're like oh yeah when he had the the ion engine and blasted the face that should be the if that's what they're going for that should be the snap oh that's right when but for the most part i feel like a lot of people aren't gonna see that moment because he kind of he barely has screen time in the episodes he's already in and then most of the episodes he's just not in period so i don't know another thing is the only kind of confirmation we had about it is from crosshair um right. and he's our main antagonist why should we believe him you know um but check out this star wars uh reach oh. around um so all the way back in empire strikes back when darth vader the huge no i am your father the reason yoda confirms it in episode six is the same reason a lot of people just said oh he's lying like right. Darth Vader is this evil killer bad dude. How on earth would he like why would he tell the truth? Um so who knows maybe we'll get another confirmation like that in season 2. Um but I agree for like the, it, if it needs the executive producer or I, I forget, it is was it the executive producer uh, I forget who yeah, it was. Yeah, executive producer and uh head writer or lead okay. writer I believe. But if you need her to come out and tell you that like i agree yeah. you're probably missing a little something i personally just give him an extra little scar um because me and you we were both looking for that if we saw that that would have confirmed my suspicion um but yeah i, I yeah I, I do like how subtle it was but i guess there's a fine line when you're you're too subtle it's not it's almost not right. serious type of thing. yeah and for someone who's not like fully like even us we we don't know like these characters like fully to their their deepest extent so if even if even if like going beyond the scar i think having him be in more episodes and us slowly seeing like well not even slowly because it's kind of instant he goes from you know soldier you know straight guy to like chip is gone i'm throwing a little personality in here feeling a little more emotions kind of anger and all that i feel like they just did not switch to that very smoothly it was not very obvious or it should have been very obvious, but it should have been there should have been enough subtle hints that most people would have picked up on it. Because um, yeah. I feel like for the most part, that's not something that that's not like a big moment where you realize, oh, he probably he doesn't have the thing anymore. Look how he's acting. Look how he's you know. Because that was just us speculating about when 
like because of the timeline of the chip was a little fuzzy and it still kind mm -hmm. of is that was just us speculating as to what that could have been um so for yeah like for the head writer to come out and have to explain what's happening that's i feel like at that point you kind of hit a point where okay maybe we should have we should have made this a little bit more obvious not super obvious but it should have been yeah put out there a little bit more yeah yeah um i i feel like that is a bit i'm i'm a little annoyed that we didn't find that out in the episode um because here's here's your two paths you have a you don't tell the audience what's happening with the chip uh he still or you know you don't tell him he says it's out but we don't know you save that for season two or b you you end the storyline in the episode by coming out and saying in the episode in some sort of dramatic scene or whatever that it, it really is it's out oh my god or it's still in but now you have lost both of those you don't get the reveal in the episode and then you don't have now and now you don't have the the question oh my god are they gonna tell us what's happening next week because the, the episode the show ended and then the writer was went back and said oh yeah no yeah it's out i if i feel like either if you're gonna reveal that reveal it in the episode or don't tell anyone and make it a subject of season two because that was a big draw at the time for me to season two to find out what's up with his head what's up with his chip but now we a didn't get it in the episode and b it's already been confirmed that it's out unless she's lying so i feel like that's that's kind of like the worst case scenario there <laughs> they, I, they, yeah they're kind of towing the line between like you said a or b and now they've just gone for c they're not even like yeah, yeah. that's yeah that's very unsatisfying like either reveal it, it or save it for the next season you know, don't don't not do it in the show and then yeah. come out on like a Star Wars Cause, blog post and say, oh, yeah, it's out. I, I don't know. Cause, yeah, because I'm happy to know, like, it's just like confirming my own suspicions. And there we go. We were right. So like, it's it's right. cool to have that. But it would be so much more rewarding if next season, I don't know, have Heck to a or Imperial Files somehow, like, or something like that. Like, like I said, like with... Yeah yoda reinforcing it just do like save it and make it more meaningful yeah um but you know this it's not all bad this does bring up some pretty uh interesting questions i something that i've been thinking about um but now can really ask because it's been confirmed would have would the chip being removed right away have even worked and worked as in you know making it so that his mind wasn't messed with like he was like the rest of the batch um if had had they figured out how to remove the chips in like episode one and they had gotten them all out would that have changed crosshair and would or would he still be this way we still don't know that um which i think is a is a pretty interesting you know question that they could follow up with in season two yeah how yeah how much was the chip how much was crosshair like that kind of dynamic is we've talked about it already um and again like you said now it's confirmed hopefully <laughs> that's going to be the direction of, of yeah. season two i would love to have like a whole fleshed out story behind that because it is very compelling mm -hmm. um because there's a case for both sides and to see that play out would be be pretty cool yeah and plus there's also the other factor of his like enhancements or strengthening of the chip at the very beginning of the season had they taken the chip out before that what would that have done to his head like you know we don't even there's so many questions that yeah uh, are so still to be answered some of them i would have wished were answered in this season um but you know as long as they touch on it eventually i think we'll end up being okay yeah um but i i'm fully believing in the idea that it was definitely after the ion engine blew up in his face uh because immediately following that he was a lot more angrier and sort of you know just angry towards the bad batch in the ryloth episodes he was like he was ex he got he kind of like a like a smile when he was told he was allowed to go yeah. down uh he didn't kill hauser i feel like pre pre blast crosshair when he had the chip he would as soon as hauser started talking talking up the clones i feel like crosser would have just blown him away he did that with the one elite squad member it was like es01 i think uh it was the one he just blew away in that on uh with the uh what are they called on Ander, on the Onderon people yeah he, got, he just killed that soldier i feel like he definitely would have killed hauser if he had the chip still but he didn't he held back he just wanted to see what happened 
um, before the engine blows up in his face, he tells his squad to kill Omega. Afterwards, <laughs> in his interactions with Omega, he 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 tells he orders his troops to get her on a ship and get her out of there, and then he saves her life when she's underwater. So there's like I feel like that has that has to be the point where they removed it. And even even if you know, like it ended, it would have ended up not working. They probably needed to anyway because it could have killed them. Uh, when Tup had his chip removed due to like whatever was wrong with his, because his was not working properly at all. When his was removed, he died. So mm. you know, there's a whole lot of questions as to what they do to your head. You know, um, I think there was like. I can't remember exactly, but it was kind of, like, inferred that the chips were, were like, tumors. Because when they pulled up Tups on the brain scan, I think it was like, oh, there's a tumor here. Uh, but it was actually the inhibitor chip. So, you know, there's a lot of... I, but I feel like that's definitely where it was removed. Yeah. I, honestly, I hope um, they don't tell us. Because um, I feel the same way. I'm like, oh, it's definitely there. So, again, if, if we have the producer come out and say, oh, yeah, it's uh, right there. Um... <laughs> that would like water down for me um it seems like she didn't say it in her interview uh which makes me happy makes me think they won't say that um but like there's so much i want to know about the chips but the more you tell us uh like the more we see the man behind the curtain i like kind of leave it mysterious kind of leave it open up in the air to a certain extent to where it's still like ooh, like this ominous thing because now i feel like we can discover a little bit more but it's still that ominous like order 66 thing that it, yeah that it should be yeah he also um a lot of people were using the fact that he in the last two episodes he was like rubbing his head a couple times as uh, evidence was. that he still had the chip um but if you watch he's not grabbing like his right temple it's more like the left side of his head and it's kind of his whole like he's grabbing his whole face and his forehead so that would i mean it, he's he he could just be getting headaches from the enhancement treatment at the beginning and the fact that he doesn't have a chip and all that has been put onto his brain physically so maybe his brain is just going through is just feeling what he would with the chip instead of on his right side of his head it's like his entire brain um that's a possibility but we know now that since he doesn't have the chip it's clearly something's wrong with his head um, so he's not fully, you know, out of this yet. There's still stuff that could go down. Like, he could just, you know, fall over and, like, his head could, like, he could just have, like, really yeah. bad headaches or something. Um, could we, that, I feel like that was definitely intentional. The, the few times that we see him rub his head or grab his head. Um, it's, it's not even in the same spot where the chip is on the head. It's, like, the other parts of his head. So I feel like that's definitely intentional. Um, but I wonder what exactly that is implying. That's another thing, um, back to where, how, like, it, it wasn't so easy for us to decipher it out, we, we assumed, but then they throw in scenes like that where he is rubbing his head, <laughs> and like, like you said, even if it's not in the right spot, maybe it's affecting his whole brain, like, that's another way to where they were kind of towing that line in, in kind of a weird way, um, because if, like, maybe they'll pick that up, like you said, maybe, like, because it has to be intentional, right? They did a whole thing with Wrecker. Yeah, Wrecker his head. intentional. Yeah, and that was definitely intentional. So, like, that, him touching his head again, Crosshair, made me say, oh, maybe it is still in. But now it's confirmed out, so I don't... And, like, why make him rub his head if it's not so... I don't know. It was, it's a weird way to do that. I hope they, in Season 2, expand upon that. Maybe, like, like he does have side effects or something to where maybe it was a tumor and he has like a hole in his brain or something crazy yeah, definitely. I, don't, I don't know yeah. but yeah it is weird that they they had those yeah um there's kind of a little little bit of uh insight i guess into crosshair's point of view his perspective um he he sees the empire as like the bigger picture the empire is the ultimate goal for him with that whatever's been done to his head um has made it so that the empire is like the only thing that's that's worth fighting for because the republic does not exist so to him it's he's going to be part of this this you know just this empire it's an empire i was trying to find another word other than empire because it's called the empire but it is an empire itself regardless aside from the name yeah. um he he he's under the impression that he is meant to be a big part of this he's meant to be this elite soldier that's like 
you know, above everybody else. He that's why he's trying to convince his squad to join because we're we're the best soldiers that they could have. We're so much better than these recruits. Um, you know, join us. We could be a part of this great empire. Um, he sees that as the bigger picture that, you know, everything else just kind of doesn't matter. Um, and I kind of noticed that a little bit more when you realize the Empire basically did the same thing to him in this finale that the Batch did to Crosshair in the first episode. In the first episode, the the Batch, like, abandons him and they, they kind of just leave him um, and they go their own way because it's, like, the only choice they have. And then here, the exact same thing happens with the Empire. They, they're not even abandoning Crosshair, literally leaving him to die and intentionally blowing up the facility, regardless, and they, they don't care if it kills him or not. Uh, but he, with the Batch, he's angry at them because he feels betrayed by them. But with the Empire, he was like, eh, it, you know, that's, they did what they had to do. So I, that's like a kind of just like a contradict, not a really contradiction, but I guess a parallel. And it shows how much he mentally he has changed and how much he values the empire because they did the same thing that he is enraged at his brothers for and he just shrugs it off like it's nothing his whole arc has been you know finding the batch and like hunting them down because for what they did to him but then the empire does something arguably way worse than what the batch did by leaving they literally try to kill him and abandon him but he's totally fine with it whereas the batch he like resents them which goes to show either it's just a writing miscue or that's just explaining how much in his head he values the empire and sees it as this great you know this great empire i guess yeah i i will say um i sympathize a lot with with crosshair not saying i love the empire um but i always coming from in my eyes i see it more like i for me personally if my own team rains hailfire and destroys an entire city while i'm there i would probably flip slides honestly if not just drop out and don't fight at all um right so that's like kind of but i can like to to crosshair the bad batch are traitors they're they're disobeying yeah. orders and they're fleeing away um and to him he's still following the orders even though it's changed even though it is the evil empire now to him it's not um kind of in the same sense the jedi in episode three we see both Obi-Wan and Yoda just murdering clones, clones they, they fought with um, in, in the Jedi Temple. And to, it, it's kind of like they don't really have emotion behind it um, because they're still fighting for, for the side they believe in. Um, now the Jedi are the good guys <laughs> and the Storm Trappers <laughs> are the bad guys. So I'm not saying Crosshair is right, but he, he's fighting for what he believes in and everyone else to him is his en enemy. And he's trying to have the Bad Batch come back. He's like, stop like being traitors. Like they want me to kill you. I should, it's my orders too, but I'm not because I love you guys, but please come back. And they don't, so he stays. Like I said though, <laughs> the only thing that like contradicts what I'm saying is that they literally destroyed a city on top of him. That's insane. I could see, I, I don't know, I could see something else, but that's the little extreme that I could say, all right, Crosshair, maybe you're too loyal. But I, I do get yeah. where he's coming from. I do get that. It, it reminds me a lot because a lot of the time people are, give Jedi slack, but no, they're killing their friends as well. Like I have no problem, or I guess I have a problem with Crosshair and the Empire, but I have no problem with his, his morality behind it to where it's, this is the, the government now. He's following orders. He's basically a soldier in their army. So I, I don't know. <laughs> I've gotten no. conflicted with this one just because of the extremity of how bad the empire is <laughs> i yeah no i get that but i feel like it's more of an example of what the empire has done to him because if he was just a regular person who didn't have any enhancements he wasn't a clone basically and he didn't have the chip and whatever they did to his head he and if he was for the empire i feel like if he was just a regular brain you know regular normal person once they did that to him, and he sees that they really don't value him, he probably would have turned. But I think what it is, is just showing that the Empire has conditioned him so much with whatever they did to his head, whatever they did with his chip, that no matter what they do to him, he will still see them as in the right, regardless of whatever happens to him, and he sees his brothers in the wrong for not going with this Empire. Even though they both did the same thing to Crosshair, and the Empire arguably did it worse, 
he doesn't see it that way. He sees whatever the Empire does as the correct course of action. And that's due to whatever they did to mess around with him. And that, that changed him way back in episode one. Um, and I feel like that's that could have been what they're going for. Not it's not really more it's not really his choice. He thinks it's his choice, but I feel yeah. like whatever that enhancement was, they wouldn't have put that in there if it didn't mean anything. Whatever that enhancement was, just imprinted the chip onto his brain or just completely changed him. Because uh, I feel like if he was totally normal, that would have been the turning point with him and the Empire. Yeah. I, another thing, too, is just clones in general, um, even regs, are bred to be loyal. Uh, first to Republic, then, I guess, kind of it, in the same sense with Order 66, then to the Empire. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he, he's already at a disadvantage of like trying to betray him. Then he has Order 66. Then he has the enhancement. So it, whether or not the ship is, or I guess it is out now, um, he's still at like he's still predisposed to be loyal to the Empire. So yeah, it's, it's hard for him, even <laughs> when they they bomb your city with yeah. your still in. It's still that's, hard. That's why for I him think it's a great go. great thing though, because like that's a really good. Like, he can't help it, but he thinks he can, and, like, he sees the Empire yeah. as this great thing just because of what they did to him, that he doesn't even care what they do. He's like, oh, yeah, I, I probably deserve it. A, a lot of it, too, is they're all the clones. They kind of want to die. Like, they're ready to die for the Republic um, and now the Empire. So maybe he sees it that way. Maybe he's like, oh, I was for the greater good. They were trying to yeah, take down they, the well, They were but, probably just trying to take out the Bad Batch, you know, or something but like then, that. But then it's also he's saving them, right? He he took the time to try and save them. So I don't know. It's I, I actually I, I, I kind of like the complexity. Yeah. Go, yeah. Go ahead. I don't know if it was really saving them. I feel like it was more like he probably wouldn't get out there alive without their help, and they needed to work as a team. It was like you know yeah. you're my enemy, but like right now we need to work together because that's the only way either of us will survive. Type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, because um, like the city was literally falling on them and it was sinking into the ocean. <laughs> so if you're going to throw like, oh, well, let's fight right now while the city's being destroyed. Also, at the same time, probably dooming both groups of people. You know, I, I feel like you just see like, well, I guess I mean, they're, well, I'm outnumbered by a lot and I, working together would be the only way we get out of this. Yeah, because uh, at the end, he doesn't join them, obviously, because he's like, he said this doesn't change anything. So he still feels the same. But it's just in that moment, he needed to work with them to, to get out safely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which brings me to my next thing. Uh, we know that uh, based on, I think, I think text that or something, the Imperial Scouts will eventually show up to look at the wreckage to make sure everything's okay. They'll find Crosshair. But isn't he technically a traitor? At least in the eyes of the Empire? Um, from what ES, I think, 03, which was the uh, one elite squad trooper that escaped, from what ES 03 saw was all of the other troopers dead. And then Crosshair and his brothers fighting the uh, the droids. So that could be reported as he and and he said to Rampart, or I think ESO three was a she. But she said to Rampart that yeah, you know, he, he's lost it. He's lost it. You know he's he's lost control of the situation. So I feel like in their eyes he would technically be a traitor because he didn't even kill the batch either. That was one of his directives. And Rampart was like, "Go hunt them down. It's fine. Go ahead." So. In their eyes, at least, not only did he not kill the Bad Batch, he teamed up with them to take out Imperial forces. So that it's not even like they're going to pick him up and he'll be welcomed back because, A, he, they didn't really care about him in the first place. He was just a like a test dummy, which he doesn't realize. And B, he's probably technically a traitor to the Empire for what he did. Uh, I, the way I saw it was more he failed his mission, not betrayed it um in a sense where yes he killed those people but uh the ESO3 or the elite squad member who escaped she didn't see that she just saw them dead and Crosshair and the Bad Batch fighting those droids now those droids weren't commissioned by the Empire those are Kaminoan training droids and Omega is the one who released them um so when she says oh he lost control of the situation to me it's like the Bad Batch are escaping and Crosshair is just fighting for his life now and whether or not he survives, they don't really care. Yeah. Um, if they pick him up, I see it as, hey, you failed. You're no longer going to be our guy anymore. Maybe they demote him or something. But I, I don't think they're going to, I don't know, say it's treason or, hey, you worked with them. I don't think there's enough evidence. Um, I, I could be not reading enough or reading too much, but 
I think he's still gonna be fine. He's still gonna be working with the Empire, even if it's like they don't like him as much. Like even if they still think he's a failure, I think he's still gonna be a part of it. Yeah, I I can I agree with that. It's just a matter of, um, it's, there's the possibility that you know somebody lies about the truth because yeah. regardless of what we think or what actually happened and like what you were saying, this crosshair more just like like trying to stay alive. Um, this elite squad trooper, we, we've seen conflict between the troops and Crosshair throughout the season, the few times that they're on screen. Maybe this trooper could be using this as an opportunity to get Crosshair out of there. Oh yeah, I, I saw it with my own eyes. He gunned down our men and like he, he started working with his old team again. Um, you know, so there's, there's also that because I feel like that elite, that would add a little bit of depth to the, the one elite squad soldier we have left. Um, that could be a very interesting sort of, you know, them, this, this trooper lying to the Empire, telling them, yeah, he's a traitor, he worked with them, um, and that could be an interesting development. Maybe Crosshair is imprisoned by the Empire, and we get some scenes of him being interrogated or whatever, just, you know, setting up interesting plot points, because um, I feel like it was also not an accident that that last Elite Squad trooper had a yeah. couple, you know, significant scenes and also escaped Kamino. Yeah, yeah, and funnily enough, that would be correct because <laughs> Crosshair really did betray. He really yeah, did try yeah. to save. So, yeah. Um. All right, moving on here. Got some couple details. Uh, I thought Wrecker had a pretty nice moment. Um, in the tunnel there when he was talking to Crosshair, uh, he got mad at him. He's like, "We wouldn't even have been this in this position if if you hadn't, you know, you know, whatever." Um, and then he and then he gets kind of sad. And he's like, "We would, we still would have taken you back if you came, you know." He. I mean, I feel like that was a really interesting moment. I wish we had some more of that, but for the scene we got with Wrecker, I thought that was pretty cool, you know, because he, while being mad at, at Crosshair and, you know, like, just for all the things that he's done, deep down they still, you know, care about him because he's, or Wrecker at least, cares about him because, you know, he's their brother. Uh, he said, I mean, if you would have came to us, we would have, you know, welcomed you back with open arms, which I think was a really good moment. Yeah, and just as well, Tech, um, he goes, I, I, I think, it, I, I might be misquoting, but he says something like, just because I understand doesn't mean I agree. Um, and that was really good as well. That's probably the best lines of dialogue I've heard from Tech, uh, besides jokes this season. Yeah. Um, and it was, yeah. Um, I think it was, it's like, it's his nature. He cannot change that. Or something yeah. And it, and it was like, just because I know, like, doesn't mean I agree with it. Um, which was like powerful. I really like that that whole like tunnel scene. Um, that's the stuff both me and Evan have been saying we want like more of that interaction between yeah. the group. So finally seeing it like this is awesome. Like this is done well. This is exactly yeah. what we want. Um, I, I I have no complaints about that. I, I do agree. Although I feel like it's very very basic and surface level. The 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 depth of the character development in that bit from Tech is. Um, just because I don't, just because you know, I know doesn't mean I agree. Okay, so the most that we know from that interaction is that Tech does not agree with Crosshair. I feel like they could have went even deeper with that because that's very surface level. That's like a children's book. Like on Crosshair was mean. Tech did not agree with that. You know, I, I if the, he lost, like same with that one uh, episode seven or eight when they're on um, when they're on the junk plant. I forget. I always forget the name. Uh, but when he's up in the bridge with Omega, just Braca. seeing Braca, yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> scenes of him, like, you know, come, breaking that facade of like this, not, it's not even really a facade because it's just who he is, but him just um... breaking beyond the, the technical, you know, whatever guy. Because that, that's, it, we found a little bit of character in that one line he had, but at the end of the day, that line was still just regular tech. He was just analyzing crosshair he was just stating facts and the all we got for the most part was the fact that he disagreed with the with what crosshair felt you know maybe if he broke you know if he got mad if he got actually angry and emotional at crosshair kind of like how record did that would have been a great scene because then all the other members would have been looking at him like he had four heads because they're like this i've never seen this side of him and he's coming out like this when and then crosshair would feel that emotion there because he also would realize i've never seen something like that from from tech uh, i feel like they could they could there's always missed opportunities there where they could just take it a little bit they set it up and then they just they fumble right at the five yard line it's just 
I don't know, kind of disappointing, yeah. but also, you know, kind of good because at least there's there's a little bit of something for us to to grasp at. We've been so depraved for it that <laughs> anything <laughs> as minute as that is is seems good. But no, I yeah. I agree. I think this is another opportunity to do way more. Um, yeah. But yeah, but at least at least we got that. I'll give them credit. At least we yeah. got that. And uh, we'll talk about it more in this in the whole season review. But specifically this episode, we we really got nothing else in terms of any other characters. We have Hunter Crosshair, a little bit of Omega, and a little bit of Wrecker, and then like five percent of it all being maybe tech. But this is a consistent thing throughout the show. Nobody else has got... Echo had like five lines in this entire episode. And half of them were jokes or just like him describing things that are happening. Um, like Echo just got completely shafted in this finale. He has absolutely <clears throat> nothing to do. And it's sad. Echo is one of my favorite clones from the Clone Wars. And just seeing him along with these other clones, obviously. But Echo more so because we've been with him longer just get completely like screwed over for any sort of character growth or development to the point where like he is a minor side character like he yeah. probably had like l under a minute of dialogue in this entire episode which to me is just crazy for one of the main characters yeah i, I was gonna say um not necessarily in in the bad batch but from clone wars arc uh if crosshair for instance had one or two lines that's fine crosshair is the stoic silent type Echo, he's a personality. <laughs> We've seen so much of him. There's so much they can do with his character. He's been th through so much. It's like all of Clone Wars. Um, even just this Bad Batch season, he's been through a lot. But they're they're pushing him to the sideline, especially in this episode. Um, when, again, this is the finale. If there's time to do something, it's now. Um, and he really didn't have a lot. Yeah. And it's not like he's transformed like like into a crosshair esque character to where he's like, oh now he's a strong stoic type. Um he's changed so much he doesn't he doesn't speak as much. No, he's still kind of the same echo, but they don't just they don't share it enough. <laughs> they don't yeah. show it. Which That's why is... I really really liked War Mantle where he had a little bit to do there. Like he had a yeah. you know, he was the reason that the team went in to save Gregor because of his connection with Rex and how he feels about, you know, going into to save troopers because what what the patch did for him and he feels like they should you know be able to repay that favor that's one of my favorite moments of echo and then ever since then it's just like he's just there again they they have yeah. little moments for each character and like that's enough to to appease you for like the week and then they just drop them and they're just there as like set pieces like little, yeah you know it's just very very uh very aggravating and kind of just when they when they set it up and they do it right sometimes which proves that they can and then they just don't exactly and get episodes like yep. infested and Roasted. that's because like when they do it that shows like no echo is vocal he does have points to make so when they miss opportunities to me at least it's an error like that's a slip up like that's a mess up that's not like oh he's just choosing to speak no if you show me he, he stands up for what he believes he had like if that's a part of his character make it a part of his character and not just with echo with everyone like it's they're so hit or miss it kind of feels like they're just hmm who could who could give a good line here echo all right go ahead instead of saying what would echo do in this situation oh he would speak up okay he will speak up it's more along the lines of oh we need someone to convince them to go after this go after uh Gregor, they need someone to help them out. Okay, Echo makes the most sense. <laughs> yeah. Or like, we need someone to to talk with Omega. Okay, Hunter makes the most sense. Make him do it. Like, it's it should be it shouldn't be that way. It should be what is this character thinking at this moment of time, and just act on that, not what makes the most sense for the story. Yeah, I agree. Um, and it's not even that you you, it's not even that they're not allowed to sideline characters and give them minor roles. It's, you have to earn it first. If Echo had his own dedicated episode where the entire, like, 25-minute runtime was about an arc that he went through, or just something about his character changing and growing, okay, then the episode after that, you've earned to give him, like, five or six lines, because we've had something from him in terms of development where we're satisfied where he is his character and we care about what he's currently doing. But if you give a character nothing, and then continue to just sideline them episode after episode after episode without having done anything, then it's then it's like, well, why do you keep doing this to me? You know, like I want to see more. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, for instance, Omega. 
a um, couple episodes she was literally sidelined or she didn't have a lot of speaking roles. That's fine because we've seen her developed. We've seen a lot of her. Um, we know that, okay, she, she can be quiet for this episode. That's fine. Uh, but we have all that development that when she's not saying stuff, we still can like kind of understand what she's feeling. But with Echo, there's so little that it's like, there's too much left to, to, to guess. Like it's too much left up for the viewer. And it's, I don't know, it's, I think this episode especially because it's the finale. Like <laughs> there's a time to get all emotional and sad about Crosshair. It's now. And they had it, they had it with Wrecker and, and Tech and a little bit with Hunter too. Um, and of course Omega, but really not Echo. So yeah, yeah. I don't know, yeah. Um. Echo did have one line, a little little callback line that kind of made me chuckle when they walked into the Bad Batch's room. He was like, at least the smell's gone, which was a callback <laughs> to the very yeah. first episode. I think it was also Echo that was, who said something about the smell in the room uh, when they all got back from their uh, their mission. And he said something about the smell. So I thought that was a fun little callback. Um, but I want to move on to my biggest problem with this episode. One of my biggest not really problems i don't know just things that i wish happened um okay first of all i love az3 i love that droid uh he's great his him being in the show is awesome i'm really glad they brought him back because we don't see him after the fives arc and you know it's like what the heck happened to him uh that fives arc is one of my favorite arcs in the clone wars period uh and him being there to add that little bit of levity and to be a partner to fives was awesome uh his voice is great his design is great um AZ3 should have died in this episode. Really? I will stand by that until the day I die. AZ3 could you? <laughs> should have died in this episode. I, when they saved him, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll break it down right now. <laughs> but this, this is a big thing for me. I mean, this whole series has been about, other than the Bad Batch, about the transition from the Republic to the Empire. The Republic is gone. Everything about it is dead and gone. This would have been... We just saw Kamino get obliterated, just destroyed, sunk into the ocean, gone, like the Republic era is gone. AZ-3 is one of the last, you know, things we have to remember that era by. And having him die is like another nail in the coffin for the Republic. He was there with Fives. Order 66 on Kamino during the Clone Wars, helping out the Bad Batch, who were part of the Clone Wars. That was another reminder of the past, which they've been actively changing this whole show. They've been moving on to Stormtroopers. They've been taking away all of the Republic colors, taking away everything from the Republic, destroying Kamino. Him dying would have been the final nail in the coffin, for me anyway, as a sign saying, the Republic is gone. I, that scene was perfect. I, I, I mean, my, he was like, my, my mission is clear now, or like, my purpose has been fulfilled. You are safe, or whatever. And he just sinks. He lets go, and he knows his, he did his job, and he, he sacrificed himself for his friends. And then they just, Omega, with one of the dumbest decisions to get out of the tube and go yeah. after him, just watching it again, it just made me mad. Like that was such a perfect emotional. And it's not even because I don't like AZ. I love AZ. But that was the that was that would have been a perfect emotional moment. Now, sure, you have the crosshair thing, but you can have you can still have that. Just have Omega get out and then she can't get him. And Crosshair, you know, pulls her out of the water and AZ's still gone. You still could have had both moments. But instead they just took away the big emotional moment. Because you're like, oh my god, he's gonna die. They were building up to it with him running out of power the whole time. The music when Omega gets taken down by that rubble. And AZ's the only one there that can help her. You know, all that set up right up to the very moment. And he's, he's finally, you can look up from Omega's tube and it's just clear water. There's no debris. It's just a straight line to the surface. And AZ's satisfied. He's done his job. And then the final reminder that one of the final reminders we have of the Republic era dies off along with Kamino. Would have been a perfect moment. But no, you got to make sure you pull him out. It just uh, cross there, boops him out, and they just haul him out. Oh, yeah, he's fine. We'll just charge him up. He'll be fine. Maybe we'll plug him in a gonky, and they'll have some one-liners. It just bothers me so, so much. That was a perfectly set-up moment, and if they just pulled the trigger, if they just went through with it, I, I don't understand why they held back. Sure, this is partially a kid's show, but they have not been straying away from dark themes, in Clone Wars and in this entire show. There's 
you know, it's not just a like a little kid show. It that was like that. I don't know. I was kind of I was happy, not happy. I was I was sad when I saw it, but in the back of my head, you know, subconsciously, I'm like, wow, what a great moment. And then they ruined it. Um, I don't know. Just, just I that bugs me. That will bug me. Uh, that's my rant. And I, oh. how, how do you feel about that? No, no, no. The rant's not over. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> boy. I, I want to talk a bit about AZ to continue yours, and then I'm gonna share with this episode because it ties in just the same. Um, but yeah, with AZ, you said it perfectly. I'm not gonna rehash that. I will say. Why on earth is he still here? What is his purpose going to be in season two? Um, AZ was the Camino droid. He knew all the secrets of Camino. Um, he helped him get to Nalase's secret lab. He knew about the tunnels. Okay, cool. He was also the Order 66 droid, right? He helped Fives and Clone Wars get it out. Um, he helped all of that. Uh, he helped Omega and everything like that. Camino's gone. Order 66 already happened. Why is it? <laughs> what is he going to do? Like you said, give one liners <laughs> with Gonki? I don't know, dude. He's literally a medical droid for Kamino. Kamino's destroyed. There are no more clones. All their chips are out. There's, I have no idea what they're going to do with them. Um, but he ties in right in. The biggest pet peeve for me. Oh, I think this, I know exactly. Where it's you're going. this whole little ending plan. It just threw me out of it. I don't know what it was. I guess I can kind of like make a little bit of, okay, I guess it makes sense. But them just flying out in tubes and floating to the surface. It's just so weird. I'm going to get nitpicky real quick. One thing, Omega got her own tube. They put <laughs> two <laughs> full-grown clothes. They put Hunter and Crosshair and Echo and Tech in their own tubes. And Omega, a seemingly 13-year-old child, has her own tube. I don't know why. That leads to her jumping out of her tube to see AZ. I knew it. One of the dumbest things ever... Like you said, it ruined the moment. On top of that, that's just plain dumb. That threw me right out of it. Um, you, we said it a little bit in the review. I still have trouble on it. Why wouldn't they just wait until the oxygen is just about done, all the debris is falling, it's settled, and then they just float up no debris? You said, all right, maybe it takes a while to fall. I can see that. But the fact that I have to take a step back and say, oh, well, the debris this way. Oh, she has her own tube because she has to save AZ. Oh, it's like, oh, there's just so much that, like, I love Immersion. I was thrown out of it here. And it stinks because the rest of their escape from Camino, I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. All right, the tubes, all right, they're in the lab now. Cool. Like, it, it seemed difficult, but it seemed obtainable. And then this last one just seemed difficult for no reason, especially yep. <laughs> Omega jumping out of that tube. I don't know. That's, oh, my. And even, like, even when I think about it, I think, Oh, well, Crosshair, if he shot her with, like, the grappling gun, maybe it would have hurt her. Like, it can't hit her in the chest or something. It might impale her. He could have, like, shot her in the foot or something. She wears boots. Like, Crosshair is the best marksman in the free like, the galaxy. Like, that, there could have been a million ways to avoid saving AZ, but for some reason they did. And this whole ending plan just threw me out of it. On rewatch, I was, like, even more just, ah, oh, like, frustrated with it. it yeah. Honestly, it's... I, I do enjoy this episode, but this is like, ooh, it, it's got me worked up a bit. I, I had to get this little rant off my chest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I, oh, yeah. I definitely agree with what you're saying, but uh, I don't think I feel nearly as, you know, yeah. disturbed let, by the... Let by me say, plan. I'm nitpicking and I know it. I don't yeah. want to, yes, I, I know it. Don't flame me. I know it, but it, it's just it's just how I feel. Ugh. Yeah, I can I yeah. I can suspend suspend my disbelief like a couple hours that that like at minimum like two hours. You know they had to, you know maybe take some time to set up the plan. Az still running out of power. Um, what if like a piece some a chunk breaks and they need him to push him up or something? Just in a, anything to go wrong. Az would be very useful. So that part I'm I'm fine with, but yeah, like I mean, could, could you you could have fixed that by just changing a couple lines of dialogue and then making it oh we only have like 20 minutes of air or something. Yeah. Um, but I feel like the biggest, I feel like subconsciously why that's such a big issue is because of when it ended up happening with AZ and Omega and like that just piled on top of everything. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even done with that. I was gonna move on to my <sighs> next thing with that. Oh. He's got more. Something, Let's hear it. Let's something hear it. Oh, that we, something we both touched on was the okay. fact that Omega made 
the idiotic decision to open the tube underwater. The dumbest idea. While there's debris everywhere to try to go get this probably very heavy droid, he doesn't walk around, he like hovers. So he's like, he's definitely heavy underwater when she's young and she's probably not physically very strong yet. Just such a dumb decision, but a decision that is in line with her character. This is something she's been doing all season. Every time there's an opportunity to save somebody, Omega's all for it. That is her, most of her, you know, conversations with Hunter. We have to go save this person. No, but, but we have to. Okay. And then they do it. That's been her <laughs> big thing so far. Um, and, you know, for the most part, I'm all right with it a lot of the time. You know, she's naive. She's literally only been on Camino. Uh, she sees her brothers as, like, these brave soldiers who go out and save people. So that's what they should be doing all the time. I totally agree with that. And I would have been fine with her decision to do this if AZ died. What this does is shows Omega that you cannot always save everyone. Omega opens the door, stupid decision, goes down, you know, tries her hardest, gets, goes to grab AZ, try to pull him up, and she almost dies herself, gets pulled out by Crosshair. AZ is gone anyway, despite her best efforts. Sometimes you cannot save everyone. If somebody is, like, sacrificing yourself, you know, you can't always, you know, go in and... Sometimes saving them is not even the right decision, Rose. It's... That, <laughs> that would have been a great moment for her character that we've seen all season she's been consistently doing this where she you know trying to save everyone gotta save you let's you know we gotta make sure that this person's okay we gotta save Hera. we gotta save the freaking guy from the bug episode i didn't care what his name was <laughs> but here instead of changing it up making her feel differently making a big character movement where you know she does that again but this time it doesn't work az dies and she's like she doesn't know what to do with herself. She feels like she failed. She's like, great. We could have a lot of, you know, interesting character moments with her after that because, you know, all the emotions running through her, like she, this is something she thought, oh, well, if we try hard enough and we, we you know, go to save everyone, it works and we, we do it. But this time it actively hurt everyone. If Crosshair wasn't there, who knows how, she probably oh, would have just drowned. Um, like, so that would have been a huge lesson for her as to you can't save everyone and it would have been a great character moment for her that's why i wouldn't have minded the move to open the pod in the end if they went through with it and killed az that's what i thought was happening that's like literally what was you know paved that's what they've been paving the way for with her saving everybody everybody every single episode i thought for sure az was going to die and we would have a moment with her where she realizes that sometimes that's not the best choice and sometimes you can't always do that but just, no, the thing with AZ, with the Republic and the Empire, that plus this development with Omega, that is a humongous missed opportunity, makes that my biggest problem with this entire episode. I I like how you framed that. It's, it's in a way that I hadn't thought about before. Because I agree, it is in her character to do something stupid like that. I didn't really think yeah. about that. But, I, I, like, it's unearned. Like you're saying, uh, like, AZ doesn't die, like it's for nothing it, it seems weak it's unearned and i i think that's why i'm getting so heated about it as well um because i didn't even think about oh yeah that is kind of in her character but i would like accept that again if she learns that big lesson if it's if it's earned like <laughs> if something happens yeah. to make it impactful but it, it's yeah it's yeah i i really like how you framed that i'm glad you you continued yeah. it because that yeah. kind of i mean Imagine that, plus what I said earlier about the fall of the Republic and the turn to the Empire with AZ's oh, yeah. death that represents, that combined, would have been a huge moment. Um, and I'm just really upset that we didn't get it. Um, but, uh, before, a couple, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna cool off here. Uh, <sighs> I got some weak or positive things. Um, yeah. yeah, we did like the episode. We did yes, like it. Despite what you may think. Um, <laughs> this episode, once again, had amazing music. Kevin Kiner just him with all of the music that he did for clone wars and now the music he's doing for bad batch is just great i love love it all um they they reused the bad batch theme in here and like it was very noticeable sometimes you hear like dun 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 dun, dun but like you know change like it's it's lower pitched or it's spread mm -hmm. out it's to fit this action music piece that's going on just the usage of their theme um was really awesome uh we've seen other examples of the music being great like their theme in general by itself is great 
um, War Mantle with the switch to the original trilogy music. Um, I think that's something that has and always will be great in any Star Wars is the music, and I'm really glad that this keeps that trend going. Moreover, kind of on the same kind of aspect is the visuals. Love yes. the visuals, especially, uh, I don't know if I said it in the reaction, maybe I was just so overwhelmed or whatever, but um, <laughs> ironically, right after that whole big plan, that whole AZ thing, when they're floating um, in the fiery water, they all oh, have yeah. their guns drawn on Crosshair. That, awesome. That looked great. All the flames and smokes almost looked real life. I think Kamino looks better in Bad Batch than it does in Episode 2 which is outlandish to say. Um, and then the last one is uh, the final scene. Um, I know I did say this, is it, they had that kind of group shot um, on that platform. It's it's now sunny, it's now the morning. Um, that's another just, like, they've been killing it <laughs> with yeah. the visuals, and we literally say, oh, they get better every week. And this visually seemed like a finale to me. I love the visuals in it, especially on rewatch. I was paying extra attention to that and the music and everything. That's been on par probably some of the best in like all star wars which is if you if you're a star wars fan you know how good the visuals and music are so yeah so yeah um, especially in the first half all that destruction and the the whole place yeah. coming down around them when they're trying to awesome. escape that yeah. shot of all the pods being smashed underwater and just all the pressure of the water just breaking them and that room flooding all the emotion that you get from the from the visuals and the music is great um I yeah. will say I I saw like on Instagram at one point um, something about the animation that I haven't been able to unsee. It's like I forget oh, no. what it's called. It's oh, like no. uh, it's like um, like focus blur or like background blur or something. It's we like when when something is in focus when something is like the subject of a scene. Like if Hunter's standing there, you know, right. talking to this the camera or towards the camera anyway, they're in focus. And then everything in the background is super blurry, blurry. and it really oh, frames the 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 main subject in a really weird way. Like the blur in the background is just really off-putting, and it's like <laughs> it's like a, it's like a camera lens yeah, yeah, yeah. thing, which I'm almost certain that was not a thing in Clone Wars. Like it would be slightly blurred, but you can see what's happening. But if it's like some scenes in Bad Batch where the entire background is just like like somebody who doesn't have glasses on, and I. I mean, I didn't notice it until it was pointed out, so it's really not that big a deal. Um, but just a little thing like that uh, yeah. so it makes me say that it's not better than Clone Wars animation-wise. So now everyone has to rewatch and, and see that now. <laughs> you just <laughs> ruined yeah. it for everyone. Um, yeah. Dang, I didn't notice that. I could see how that could be annoying. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But, you know, not that bad. That's, and that's, it, a, that's another nitpick, yeah, though. Yeah. That's like, I can get past The details that. in the face, in the animation, the 3D models, just absolutely amazing. Oh, uh, Omega's wet hair again. Oh, so great. Yeah. 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 Um, whew, geez. Uh, well, we're about to hit an hour, so, but we're going to keep trucking. <laughs> we got more stuff to talk about, and I'm totally fine with it because it's the finale. It's the so finale. Yeah, yeah, let's keep going. Hour, hour and a half special. Um, well, last, last little uh, note I had about you know stuff that happened in the episode um just seeing more of those scenes of Camino, uh just really heartbreaking we also had that clone who was really like distraught about the fact that his brothers yeah. just literally blew up Camino to rampart at the beginning and he was like good um just that beginning half i feel like the first half of the episode was definitely stronger than the second half or the first two-thirds anyway um like once they got to knowledge secret lab is when it started to to wane off a little bit um but those scenes in the beginning of Camino more destruction and the music and like omega stopping to stare at the pods as they get smashed um you know the visuals like and just the the, the fact that it's venators and clones who used to defend camino now turning against it and just blowing it up um was really great yeah i yeah i have almost no qualms with the first two thirds um that whole rant we just went on is pretty much <laughs> our only issues with yeah. this um and just for the reasons we mentioned i won't get into again but yeah. i agree uh, like there are like really good highlights of this episode like I, yeah yeah like like you're saying that clone who's like uh, yes uh sir or, or something like that the hesitation you know is destroyed or yeah it's it's just that little thing that's like that's the right amount of subtlety that's like ooh, you can feel it I, right, yeah right. i'm glad yeah. you pointed that out i forgot about that but yeah, yeah. Okay, so moving on to our final thoughts, uh, despite having the word final in the title, will probably be like 20 minutes long. Yeah. Um, is it, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like 
we kind of would have had a better finale if they just cut out a couple scenes and mush the two episodes into one, one 40 minute one big episode like, yeah um the only thing you would really be losing is the the cliffhanger at the end of part one which is something i'll talk about after this um but if you take that away and then you put everything into one big finale um fix up the stuff at the end there with az and omega cut some of the extra stuff that kind of ruins the flow a little bit make it just one big episode i feel like we would we could have had a really great finale and this was a good finale i'm not saying it was bad it was good but i don't i don't know if i'm ready to call it a great finale yeah um, I've you, know, seen, you know see what i mean um, like if it was one episode one continuous story that you know kind of i don't know if they could have got the emotional beats a little bit better that way i don't, I don't know yeah i no, I, i'm very conflicted with this i've seen a lot of it online um quick little shout out to anthony youtube fan who actually commented on our reaction um saying the same thing he would have preferred just one big episode um and the only reason personally i have that hesitation to just keep them separate is i loved the previous episode i love the, the cliffhanger that note they left it on um i think one big episode would strengthen the finale the whole arc altogether but i think it would weaken episode the, the episode 15 the the penultimate <laughs> There's a time word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it would weaken that episode. And and that's my only like, oh, oh like I can almost say, all right, I'll take a, a, a weaker grand finale for that first part, because I really did enjoy that first part. It's definitely my top three. Um, we'll, we'll have the rankings out, but I, I really liked it. And that's my only I want to know what you think if you're still siding with. Oh, no, I think like a, a giant episode, but I'm almost to the point where as much as I didn't like, or as much as there were kind of shortcomings in this episode, keep it the way it is, because I, I just, I, I loved last episode. Um, I definitely agree with the, the sentiment there, like the idea there. Um, but like think, about, like, think about it technically, if you have both episodes mushed into one, there is no part one. So it's, you know, it would just be one episode anyway. And then the penultimate episode is War Mantle, which was also a great episode. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like they could have had, they could have had the same quality in one episode. Um, it would take a lot of reworking, probably. Um, yeah. I think all they would need to do is shorten the escape, uh, make AZ actually die, place <laughs> that kind of more, like, in the two-thirds mark, and then you end the episode with the shot from part one at the end, where, you know, it's just the Venner just firing down, boom, cut, end. You know, there's still cliffhangers, Ooh. like, what are the batch, is the batch gonna, because, like, we get, like, the, the aftermath, no pun intended, for episode one, of what happens, you know, in the finale, at the end <laughs> of the finale. I feel like that's more of a, which will lead me to my next point, that's more of a, like, a follow-up thing. Um, but that leads me to this, this point. Would it have been better if episode 15 was the finale, and episode 16 with a little bit of reworking, was the first episode of Season 2. I was mm. thinking about that a lot. Imagine, remember all the all the hype immediately following Episode 15, all the theories, everybody talking? Imagine not knowing what happened after that final shot with the Venner just blowing up Kamino for, like, a year. I feel like if they could have snuck the AZ bit, because that's kind of a loose end that you would have, like, I don't know why that would be in the, the pilot episode of Season, not pilot, the first episode of season two, because that's like a end of season emotional moment. Maybe slip that somewhere in the finale episode. But if 15 was the finale, and then, you know, episode one of season two was like picking up the pieces, where do we go from here, coming off of that cliffhanger. You could still probably have that Empire scene too with Nala Say to end it off. You know, slap that on there. And then episode one of season two is episode 16, or, you know, parts of it. It obviously would not be exactly the same, but, like, the general sort of holy shit, Camino is blowing up end season. Yeah. And start season with, okay, whoa, what's, this is crazy, Crosshair is doing this, he goes his own way, and then that splits it into two storylines with Crosshair and the Batch for the season. That's good setup for the season. I want to know what you thought, what you think of that idea. That would be a super bold finale. Um, I honestly, I think I would love it. But I could see a lot of people going, oh, we got to wait so long to find out what happens. Or Exactly. I could see so. people getting, I know, but I could see people getting upset. And that's why I would say, that's probably why they did not 
do it that way. I could see, uh, you know, some Disney executive being like, oh, no, we have to have it yeah. nice and tidy. And you can still have. Yeah. Yes. I think they played it safe with this one. Because, um, yeah, I, I think that was a huge climax. Like that was like almost the peak. And episode 16 kind of was picking up the pieces. Which doesn't really make sense for a finale, does it? it shouldn't it be your climax? Um, That's maybe not. I, I feel like there's an argument. Know, yeah. So I, first I think, episode yeah, of the next season would be that feel. That's what that kind of felt like. And then they had the setup. If the plot for season two uh, ends up being split between whatever Crosshair is doing and whatever the Bad Batch is doing, that first episode was perfect setup for that because Crosshair didn't join them. We find out what happened to them after the fact. And then they go their separate ways, and then we kick off the season. Instead, we have what happened after in season one, and then season two is just like, okay, now they're already there. Kind of, yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, 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 I yeah. interrupted you there if you want to. No, I'm, I'm, I'm soaking it all in. Because um, <laughs> honestly, until now, I was just like, okay, either the way we had it or just mush episode 15 and 16. So for me, I was still thinking, oh, it's still going to end the same. But if you cut it off, have it end the way episode 15 ends. I I actually very much like that idea. And basically and yeah, either way would have been better than what we got. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. Oh. So. Yeah. Um yeah, but I, uh it's so hard to say cuz like them playing it safe like I, it's like okay, I get it. I get it. I could see maybe people getting angry. I don't want people getting angry, but at the same time people are kind of let down. Like people are kind of like hey, like <laughs> I, I saw online, I think it was on Star Wars Theory or something. It was a poll to where, what do you think of the finale? And it was, loved it, eh, hated it. And it was like 80% eh. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of not the sentiment you would want. And I'm sure, I'm sure if they ended it on, or if they did the same poll for episode 15, people are going to be like, whoa, loved it. That's crazy. Like, yeah. huge cliffhanger. Can't wait. I mean, so, yeah. look, no, at our, I... look at our views for our reaction videos to the two episodes. Literally yeah. 3,000 to not even 200. Yeah, people, so were, people were, were not excited, excited about excited. that episode. Yeah, the people were not we're, very excited about the last yeah, one. Yeah, not excited about this one, excited about last one. <laughs> we, right, we said right. the opposite thing, but we meant the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah. No, um, I, I actually, I, I'm, I'm going to change my... Uh, I think that's how it should... I'm, I'm changing my... Uh, I don't think... I think it should say the same. I think we should split it off at 15. I like that. I haven't yeah. thought about that before. I, I don't know if I really agree with the idea that people would be mad. Um, shows, I mean, they would be mad in the sense like, oh, I can't believe we don't find out what happens. We got to wait. I, I don't think it would be them people being mad because the, the show did wrong. Shows in on cliffhangers all the time. It's a huge, it's like an easy strategy to get people to, to watch the next season, get something to, for them to care about and they, they gotta wait to find out what happens until the next season um so i don't agree that people would be upset in terms of you did a bad thing and let us down but more than being angry like oh man we gotta wait you know that sort of intense like the the way that that the showrunners want you to feel what they want you you want more and that's how they want you to feel so i agree with that but i kind of don't because i feel like they would be kind of angry but in the way that that showrunners a, and in all shows in the past that have cliffhangers kind of want you to feel you know wanting more you know dying to see what happens and then you have to wait so long and then that may, really makes you just want to watch even more um so i i don't know i feel like either of our you know the two the two suggestions that we've had so far would probably have ended up being better than what yeah, we actually got yeah mm -hmm. which is <laughs> probably not the thing you want <laughs> yeah um I guess we can go a little bit positive. Um, it really wasn't all bad. Um, there was a lot of foundation set up for season two. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, anticipating what the Empire is going to get up to with that scene with Nala Se and the cloning. We know eventually in the Mandalorian they get to cloning. Um, so I thought that was really interesting setup. Um, Crosshair, we we don't have we have no idea what's going to happen. Is he going to get picked up by the Empire? Are they even going to care enough to like reinstate him, or will he just be like a prisoner, or will they just kill him, or like what is he going to run away? Like we have, I think that's a pretty good setup for what'll happen next season. Um, so it's not like we have nothing to think about. You know, there's a lot of foundation yeah. there, um, and I feel like they were just building it up this whole time. Yeah, I, I have a lot I want to say about season two, my predictions for that. Um, but I'll hold off on that. I'll, I'll probably say that for the, the season um, reaction because it has more to do with the entirety of season one. But for this finale, this episode, um, they left it wide open. 
um, even more so than some of the other episodes, where really season two just could go anywhere. And um, having that kind of, again, like room for interpretation, um, especially for the finale, um, where it's probably, you know, that's where you want the most interpretation because you want people theorizing and, and trying to figure out what will happen. Um, so I'm, I'm OK with it. Um, I could see or I have seen people like what's going to happen next. Like there's no clear, clear path. And that's kind of like might take away. But I like it. I, I think there's enough, like you said, enough foundation for speculation to happen and just a ton of room for you know we can get some crazy theories out there like i i love crazy theories like yeah i don't know but yeah i, mean, I, I think i think it's right. you know playing the long game for what's yeah. coming up um i th i think it's kind of funny um in the first episode uh the the bit the general idea is that the bad batch are like trying to find their place in a galaxy that's you know rapidly changing uh and then by the time the season is over the bad batch is trying to find their place in a galaxy that's rapidly changing so we kind of just went back to square one in terms of the bad batch um they've like some of them have obviously changed a bit as characters and a lot of like actual events have gone down but in essence it's basically the same thing they're like okay now we have to find out what the heck we're gonna do that was the same thing in episode one they were like okay well if there's no republic what the heck are we supposed to do and then yeah. now we've gotten to the finale and the ideology there is just okay everything's changed what the heck do we do I, I thought it was kind of funny that we really just kind of didn't go anywhere i don't know if that's really a good or bad thing because you know the gal it's the galaxy is changing obviously and it you know a lot of people a lot of people including the bad batch especially being clones of the republic don't have a very easy okay let's go do this we're going to be bounty hunters we're going to be this we're going to be that so I'm not saying that that's a good or a bad thing i just thought it was interesting that we kind of just ended up back at square one in terms of the bad batch obviously like we said there's stuff with the empire and crosshair or whatever but the main group kind of just ended up where they started and yeah that's exactly why i think it's just so wide open um kind of like how when we first got the um announcement for season one it was it was pretty wide open as well like oh what are they going to do what is going to be their place um these are still kind of the questions and who knows? It might take them a while. Who knows how long the show is going to be? Um, if they take the time to flesh it out, it could be very meaningful. We've, again, we see like they have connections with Sid now. They have connections with Rex, with Trace and Rafa. So they have these little like breadcrumb paths where they could be bounty hunters. They could fight with Rex and the Resistance and the Rebellion. And just there's enough there that we can say, okay, this plot could work, this plot could work. But there's, I mean, room enough for just, oh man, where do we go from here? It's yeah. like, like you yeah. said, back to square run. Where, what do you do now? Yeah, and we'll definitely talk about it in more detail in our full review. But yeah, um, like that, I feel like they have nowhere to go but up. Uh, you know, they know what works, they know what doesn't. I hope they'll be listening to the feedback that the fans have been giving out so far. Um, think of Clone Wars. Season one is easily the worst season of Clone Wars. It's still enjoyable television, but it's nowhere near the quality of the other seasons so I, I mean i personally think that this season of bad batch is definitely better than season one of clone wars not all of clone wars just season one at least um because they really season one was very experimental time they were playing it kind of safe um i know those two actually kind of contradict each other they were more playing <laughs> it safe because they you know didn't really know what to do yet um later on is when they got experimental once they were like okay we this thing you know we we, you know, got all the, got all the, you know, kinks, you know, figured out and everything. Okay, we want to do this. We want to do this. We know how this character's going to work. This arc, this arc. In the beginning, it was kind of like, okay, we got this animated thing. It's between two prequel movies. How do we set this up? Anakin has a Padawan. What's going on? So if this follows in that foot, the footsteps of Clone Wars, I feel like season two has a very good chance to be really really good and easily the better of the two seasons because you know if you look at clone wars season one sure it's fun it's you know it's whatever it's enjoyable but if every single season of clone wars was just like season one it would be not nearly as popular as it is it would there's absolutely zero percent chance that it is as popular as it has become because season one is very very you know not as deep or compelling as the rest of the season and even season two a little bit i mean they definitely started kicking it up in season two but even 
some episodes in season two were like, eh, this feels, this is kind of like I feel like if I skip this, I really wouldn't be missing much. Um, so if that's if the Bad Batch kind of follows that, where they take what they learned from season one, which this is something we'll break down more in our full review, and they you know pick it up and they keep doing the good things, drop some of the bad things, which we'll also talk about what the good things and the bad things are in that video. So mm. check out for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, they could have a really good season two on their hands. Yeah, I think this finale, this episode in particular, seems to indicate that we only have season two confirmed, but just based on how this season wrapped up, I think it's going to be at least a couple more seasons. I think we're going to get a lot more Bad Batch. I hope we're going to get a lot more Bad Batch. But um, yeah, there's there's so much more room to grow. It's not like a conclusion. It's a finale, but it's really not a conclusion. Um, So yeah, like you said, the first season doesn't have to be the best season. <laughs> Yeah. it almost it almost shouldn't like you should want to improve you should want to yeah. grow you don't want to peak right at season one and then have nowhere to go but down yeah so i i think like like overall like this has been a great season we'll get more into it but the finale still like it's just there's there's room to grow there's room to get better so as much as we didn't like that plan or whatever i nitpicked a lot um i'm still pretty satisfied with the way bad batch wrapped up yeah and despite what it may have seemed like, well, I thought it was like ranting and raving in this whole entire video, um, I, I thought it was a good finale. Not great, not bad. It was just good, you know? Yes. It was a little bit It was a little bit underwhelming. Not a lot really changed. Um, part one was definitely the stronger of the two parts. Um, but, you know, this is a top five, maybe top six-ish episode. You know, it's not bad. Um, not incredibly great you know it's not like oh my god that was the best finale i've ever seen uh, mm. but it wasn't you know bad it was just a little bit underwhelming um but you know f finales don't always have to be a big moment or a big cameo or a big reveal a finale could be just that a finale an end this is the end of the story the action has already happened and now we're wrapping up that you know that's a lot of that could be totally fine to a lot of people um but you know for me I, I feel like it was they could have went even further with the ideas that they set up and in the groundwork that's been laid down by the past episodes that they just kind of missed a couple they missed the mark there a couple opportunities went away uh that went wasted um so it was a little underwhelming uh but there was a lot of positives that we said we didn't talk about it as much as the negatives because it's a lot easier to talk about negative things and positive things um but you know ultimately i thought it was a good episode uh and I'm, I'm, I enjoyed it both times. I actually enjoyed it more the second time around because I wasn't mm. anticipating. Um, it was the first time you're like, oh my God, who's going to die? What big cameo? Because that, uh, that, you know, yeah. that's kind of how they've been doing episodes. Big episodes usually have a cameo of some kind. So this entire time, or the first time anyway, I was like, who's going to die? Who's who's going to, what is it like? Fennec is going to show up. Is Boba Fett going to show up? Um, but once I had that out of my head when I was rewatching and I wasn't anticipating a big cameo, I feel like I enjoyed it a little bit more, if that if that makes any sense. Because it wasn't just sitting in the back of my head like, somebody's going to show up, somebody's going to die, or this is going to happen. Uh, but once I was already, you know, at peace with the fact that this is what we got, I feel like I enjoyed it a little bit more. Okay, no, yeah, I think that makes sense, yeah. I Personally, I would disagree. I, I had a worse time, or I, I guess I was nitpicking more on my second time. Um, but it's just yeah. that I, I'm nitpicking again because or at least both of us like we, we pick on it so much because we want it to be so good and we know like oh if they did this oh it'd be amazing um, and that's not saying they did a bad job it's just we're pointing out how they can do better um, yeah. and <laughs> we're both passionate and that's that's yeah. just all that amounts to yeah and we're not we're not saying that we're better than these than the showrunners and the, like, there was absolutely zero percent chance that i could go in there and do these people's jobs uh any of them from animation to music to writing to you know just storyboarding or directing or anything producing there's i, I neither of us would be able to do any of that um and we're not saying that we're better than anybody or that we're even right you know this is just our opinions so a lot of there's could be a lot of evidence against the things we say but i feel like you know fans are what drives the entire series you know they have a lot of good ideas um they know what works they know what doesn't work uh and when they they when they see potential for something and it doesn't you know it doesn't work out they're gonna call it out and i i think that's totally fair um and overall i 
the Bad Batch, which we'll, we'll talk about more. I liked it as a season, overall, as a show. I thought it was pretty good. But, mm. uh, you know, that's uh, something we will get way more in-depth in our yeah. full yeah. season review. We touched on a lot of season overview topics so far, um, which I kind of need to stay away from. But, you know, it's kind of inev inevitable because this is the finale. Yeah. Um, so if you want more breakdowns and stuff like that, definitely check in that video we'll be talking about what we liked what we didn't like what worked throughout the season you know how we feel the season will go or has been received you know all that sort of stuff we'll definitely be talking a lot more about that in that video coming out uh i don't want to say really soon because we do have some work to do we have to watch the whole series again and we have to take yeah. notes and we have to write things down and get it formatted nicely to make it uh, a digestible video for you guys um so that that won't be out right away but that along with the ranking will be out very soon so stay tuned if you like what yeah. we're saying here we've got way more to say i know we ran long um but it is the finale and okay. there is a lot to unpack um, any any last bits you want to say here about the episode like how you thought review type things before we uh close up because i want to make sure yeah. we both get to say stuff yeah just my final synopsis on this finale is overall it's just briefly taking into account every episode of the bad batch season one this is a good episode. This is one of the better ones. And we picked on it, whatever. It's still a good finale. And I almost want to defend it, <laughs> um, even though I'm, I'm, I'm its largest critic and its biggest supporter. Um, but yeah, I was, I was still satisfied. I still liked it, but it was just very eh to me. Um, but being eh doesn't mean bad. I, I yeah. still think this is a good episode. It's very fair. Um, but yeah. Uh, Paul, Paul already touched on it a bit in the intro, but uh, we want to say thank you for for anybody who watched any of our Bad Batch videos. Um, Absolutely. Regardless of how the, the series ends up being seen years down the line when people hate it or whatever, I feel like for <laughs> us anyway, the series will always kind of have a special place there because it's kind of, you know, one of our, it was it is our biggest YouTube thing up to this point. It's where we've gotten our most interaction, um, you know, and just it's kind of, grown our channel more than anything else really has uh even though all that we really had other than bad patches like six episodes of rebels and then the mandalorian so yeah. um but I've, yeah i feel like regardless of whatever happens this show will always be a part of our channel history uh which i think is pretty cool absolutely thank you guys so much <laughs> and on that note we are ending the series or oh. the season of the series i guess uh, thank you for listening to any, if you listen to any of the reviews, I know they're long. I know you probably don't want to listen to an hour and a half of two people talking about a uh, Star Wars cartoon, but you know, we like <laughs> making them. We'll continue to make them, um, you know, check it, make sure you check. If you liked this, that we have one of these for every single episode of the bad batch, as well as a reaction video to the actual episode itself. Um, they're not as long as this. They're like 40, 50 minutes tops. Yeah. Uh, there's only a, like two or three, I think, that are over an hour. This one is like an hour and a half. So, um, but you know, it's finale. Got to go out with a bang. So, uh, yeah, thanks for listening and or watching. And uh, if you if you don't stick around for other stuff, that's fine. But recommend you do because we got some other stuff coming. And if you'll be back for season two of The Bad Batch, then we will see you then. Good. Arr. Bye. Our final goodbye, Boffin Spies. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've been sitting on that wow. one. Wow, he's had that for hours. Ooh. Oh my god, waiting for the rhyme. G. Ah, and he Jeez. gets the layup. Oh.